Right. So I just wanted to start off a little bit about um, domestic abuse. So how much do you know about domestic abuse? So domestic abuse, uh, domestic violence accounts for what percentage of all reported violent crime? I'm not going to get you to put your hands up or, you know, just to just think it within yourself, really, within your own head. I mean, what you think the answer might be? So the answer, surprisingly, you may think, uh, is 25 percent. So one in four people um, have um, uh, the domestic oops. No, it's the size of it. Um, so one in four people, um, uh, sorry, one in four um, incidents of crime um, are, uh, are attributed to domestic violence. OK, and you may recall Theresa mentioning this in her little bit um, earlier. So what percentage of women experience domestic violence in their lifetime? I'll give you a moment to think about it. Is it 2%, 10%, or 25%? I think it's quite high. I think it's about 25%. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
them to upskill. You know, maybe somebody is working at the moment, you know, perhaps they're not, you know, in, in a type of role that they're happy doing, and they, they want to be able to, um, you know, to, to move on and, uh, you know, and move on to a better career. Um, so upskilling will give them the, the opportunity to do that. Also to achieve qualifications. So, you know, sometimes, you know, school isn't the, the right um, environment for everybody. Um, you know, some people um, recognise the importance of, of education or training once they've left school. Um, I mean, they find themselves in a, in a, in a job that sort of has no prospects. So, you know, this also helps to address that, that um, they, can, they can achieve qualifications and, get, and give themselves um, the opportunities that maybe they didn't give them themselves when they were never in school or, or college. So I'm based on the Limitless pro, uh, programme. So this is the, the programme um, uh, European, European Social, Social Fund. Um, this is um, primarily aimed at, uh, at um, for women. So I work with, with women who are 18 and over. And those women either need to be employed, either full or part-time, or um, also including um, zero-hour contracts, uh, as well as self-employed women. And we don't work across Wales. There are certain areas that, that we work within. And we work within Blangna Gwent, Caffili Borough, Carmarthenshire, Pembrokeshire, and uh, Torvine. There's only certain aspects that we deliver within Torvine, as it mentions there, we're in strand three, which I will go into a bit more detail a bit later on. So, um, how were the courses delivered? Um, up until um, COVID hit, then um, you know the, the courses were delivered face to face, as you know um, a lot of people do prefer to, to receive training. But um, I think um, threshold is very very quick to respond um, to you know this this uh, uh, worldwide pandemic that we uh, that we experienced, and they were able to just switch their, their learning online quite quite uh, rapidly. So oops. So. Um, the courses at the moment are delivered through guided learning, so it's delivered through a, an online package. So once they uh, register on the course, they receive the um, the, uh, the workbooks and all the materials that they need in order to, to complete the course successfully. They will be given um, instructions to, to conduct their own research as well, so not everything is provided. Um, there is a certain amount of, of self-study that's involved and um, materials that they have to form research for their own purposes. Um, there's a weekly tutorial with a fully qualified um, tutor, so that um, that support is available throughout the the um, the course of the um, the training that they do. The training runs. Um, they're looking at um, you know you, you need to commit the the amount of time about fifteen to twenty hours uh, over the course of four to five weeks. So that makes it. Um, uh, you know, quite a very, very short term course. And if somebody hasn't been in the education for, for a while, it just gives them the opportunity to uh, you know, to get a taste for uh, going back to learning again and hopefully lead on to, to other, other opportunities for learning. Um, the training is delivered either through Teams or Zoom, depending on what the, the tutor's preference is. And uh, some um, some of these are trainings available on, on the um, education delivery platform Moodle as well. So um, has anybody here had any experience with Moodle in the past? No? Okay, so it just makes it easier for, for you've had experience with Moodle. Well, yeah. I have to use it all the time. On, on a daily basis. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah, so that, that just makes it easier for, for, yeah, yeah, for, for the tutors to keep track of their, of their students, you know, how they're progressing, uh, you know, and, and just to, to maintain those communication, communication channels with the students. So the courses that we have available at the moment, um, we have personal confidence. This, this one seems to be quite popular. Um, the, the, the personal confidence is, um, is aimed at you know, looking at you know, circumstances when people feel confident, what are the traits of confident people? Um, you know, you know, how do they, they manage to project that? Uh, also, um, mental health and stress, we've got environmental awareness as well. I mean, that's been a, quite a, a big one over the last few years. I think everybody's um, slowly becoming more aware of the, um, you know, the environmental issues that we're facing at the moment. You know, a, a lot of um, uh, county councils now have declared um, um, 
uh, climate emergencies. Mm -hmm. So this, this is something, you know, as well as um, national, international, local problem, problems in terms of uh, it, the environment. Um, you know, it looks at things across the board. And um, also safeguarding. So uh, for those of you who worked in an educational setting, uh, you're very, very familiar with safeguarding. You know, this is about how we identify people who are um, uh, you know, either um, adults or children, you know, how, whether they're at risk of uh, some form of, uh, of abuse or, or neglect. Customer service, you know, for anybody who's looking to, um, you know, to engage in retail or, you know, hospitality, you know, there's an element of, uh, you know, customer service um, training available as well. Uh, we've got volunteering and community engagement. So, uh, you know, that's um, that's one an example of one of the the courses that that we have that can be that can be tailored according to the audience because you know as well as the people actually doing the the volunteering, um, it's also suitable. It, it can also be tailored um, for the people who um, are responsible for volunteers. So the, that training can be tweaked according to the needs. So, uh, as you saw before, uh, Torvine covers strand three. So that relates uh, within Torvine, the, what we deliver there is supporting the domestic abuse and sexual violence sector through volunteering level two award and extended award. So um, that's the, the only aspect of the, the courses that we, we uh, offer um, deliver uh, through the, um, the county of Torvine. Um, finally, then the introduction to domestic abuse um, certificate of attendance on level one. So this is the uh, the course that, that's available to, to teach people around um, domestic you know, the issues around domestic mm -hmm. abuse. And um, what is specified with this is that um, learners can only do this if they if they already done a, 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 one of the previous six courses that, that we've mentioned. So, as I mentioned, I'm on the uh, Limitless project, which uh, is for, for women over 18. Um, and we also have another programme, which is called Active Inclusion, and that's the Evermore and No Bars to Education 2 projects. And that's um, and it, yeah, through the uh, WCBA Active Inclusion Fund. So, um, as I mentioned before, you know, we, we do offer this, this form of training to, uh, you know, to people um, um, to men and women, um, and in the case of active inclusion, it's the men and women who are 25 plus. Um, the counties that we cover for active inclusion are Carmarthenshire, uh, Kerrydee, uh, sorry, Carmarthenshire, Pembroke, excuse me, Carmarthenshire, uh, Caerphilly, um, Blaenau, Gwent. So those are the three counties that we cover for, for active inclusion. So this is the project um, that uh, works with people who are long-term unemployed or economically inactive. Newly started project. This is our um, CRF fund, funded uh, project, um, The Life You Want. So we've been quick to, to acknowledge that, that you know, working with men um, and women over 25, as well as women only over 18, there is opportunities for us to, to, uh, to roll that out even further. So we've got opportunities for men and women over 18. Um, across the, the uh, University Authority, as you can see there, so it's been expanded by one again, so Commander, uh, Pembroke Committee and Blaine Grant. Uh, and they need to be either employed or unemployed, so it's widening it out even further. So the course outcomes. Um, the courses can have various outcomes, so they can either choose to have a non-accredited uh, course, um, but with a certificate of attendance. Uh, it can also look to have a full length, which is where they get the Agora to Cymru Level 2 certification. Uh, that will be dependent on them completing a workbook to a, a required standard, and that will be submitted then to the Agora Cymru. Um, we also did have a shorter length training um, uh, webinars but for non-accredited courses. So if people are very, very pushed for time, you know, they need a, a little bit of, um, you know, uh, of um, education, but they don't have the time to commit to it, then they can uh, choose to do a, a short course or a webinar instead. So after they've completed their training, um, the support doesn't stop there. Um, 
special uh, learners are el eligible to receive assistance from the Helping Hands Food Bank and Clothes Shop. So uh, Teresa is very, very heavily involved with the, the Helping Hands uh, Food Bank and the, the Clothes Shop. And, you know, should people want, want to need to use those facilities, then that is available to our learners once they've completed their course. So further support is also available. Um, career goals, um, uh, so, 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 Further support is available with their career goals, uh, including job seeking and signposting to appropriate services. So if we can't uh, um, provide the, the uh, level of support that they need, we can, we can certainly refer them on to somebody else who can help them. So just in summary, uh, domestic abuse should not be a barrier to fulfilling employment. Um, you know, just because somebody finds themselves in difficult life circumstances early on in their life, uh, or even later on in their life, you know, that should never be a barrier to, to uh, securing a uh, you know, fulfilling life and a fulfilling career. Um, special courses continue to make their training accessible regardless of their personal circumstances. So as I mentioned, you know, with the IMF, uh, the, uh, the Life You Want project, we can basically now work with anybody who needs access to these training courses. And uh, the three current educational programmes offer individuals to develop personally and, and ultimately improve their employability. Okay, so um, that's me. I'm Joanna Nibaker. Uh, and uh, you know, should anybody want to have a, have a chat with me, you know, about uh, the, the services that we that we provide, then uh, I'm happy to do that. Okay. Thank you very much.